No, who exactly is our onion Mazen and the Kano? And why is the Nigerian government fighting to the no to keep him in prison? In this video, you'll be hearing from one of his close friends talk about him, right? But before we go right into it, I'd like to welcome you to IPOB Media, the place where we bring you the gospel of Biafra, the only channel where you get the latest news, updates, information and everything you need to know about Biafra and the struggle for freedom. Now, if you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to, you know, share. And also click on the notification bell so that you get to see our uploads anytime we push out videos here, right? And as you keep sharing, more and more of our brothers and sisters will get to know what is going on as regards Biafra and the struggle for freedom. Now, going right into what we have in this video. Um, one, of, one of the close friends of Mazen Namdekano made a very big confession about him. I would like, to, I would like you to watch this video and uh, hear directly from him. Hello, Bia fans. If you're a real Bia fan person, Please listen to this very message about Mazem Nandi Kano. How I became his follower from 2009, 2010, 11 up to you now. I want to re review some secrets that I know about him. Some things that I know about him. Listen carefully. This one will benefit every one of you, both your family and friends as well. Like this man is not an ordinary person. And uh, the way I saw him at that time, the first time that I, I heard his voice on, uh, on uh, I think, social media on Facebook. Yeah, I heard his voice on Facebook and I was saying, who is this man? This man is very bold. The way he speaks is very, very bold. And one day I'm going to see him. So on his broker, some of the broadcast, I keep hearing that uh, he's going to different places to go and broadcast. That's uh, where I, at that time I was in London then. So I said one of these days I will find out and uh, go to one of his brokers. I want to see him face to face. And there was a time he went to Ireland and the Ireland people welcomed him. Do you know the good thing about this? Anywhere he goes, he doesn't pay his ticket. He doesn't, he doesn't uh, buy a ticket. They always invite him. The people that are inviting him always buy his ticket to travel to anywhere he's going all over the world. They always buy his ticket. So, and uh, from there, I started saying, I said, this man is very important, you know, he looks like uh, he's more important than all this president that is a uh, American president or any other person, because anywhere he goes, before he reached here, there is a lot of people waiting for him. So let's proceed. And I started listening to him, listening to him. The things that are coming to my head, I said, this man, one day I will, I will see him. We'll call him director at that time because he's the director of Radio Biafra. So, and uh, I said, one day I will see him. So there was a time um, they announced, because anywhere he's going to, they will announce it that he's coming to that place. And uh, if you have time, you can go and use the opportunity to see him. So I went there. There was the one time he was broadcasting uh, in a place called uh, Peckham. If you know the place called Peckham in southeast in London. So I used to live um, in Luton. That is L-E-U-T-O-N. I used to live in Luton. So some of his broadcasts, 
Um, there's one lady that normally go out. Um, there's, I think, uh, it's like a personal secretary also. Uh, her name is uh, Carol Monde. So if you have been following for a long time, you will know her. She's the white woman. Her name is Carol Monde. So there was a, t a day they came um, to that place. They said they want to uh, do some broadcast. So and uh, on that broadcast there was a meeting. So after the meet, <coughs> after the broadcast, the meeting carries on. So I used the opportunity to join them, and uh, that was where that was my first time. I saw him face to face. Even before I saw him face to face. I was, uh, I used to chat with him, you know, on Facebook. So, and I, there was time I called him. Um, no, I didn't call, just chat. So I said, I said, director, I said, this job that you are doing is very, very, um, like dangerous. So I, I was thinking he's a military man before, you know, because he has mind to talk a lot of things. That he doesn't care who he affect or he, even though he will say, he doesn't feel sorry for himself. So I say, wow. So after um, that uh, bro broadcast, um, when they want to do the broadcast, I went. And uh, I went in there, I sat at the, at the back. So, and he was preaching, he was saying the gospel, he was preaching and preaching. Me that is talking from here, I'm from that state, and I speak Okwane, I speak Yoruba, I understand Isoko, I understand Bene, I understand Yoruba, I understand some of Ijo languages, I understand Igbo, and I, I do speak some of them as well. That's to, in a funny way. So let's proceed. As, uh, as we go, as, the, as this man was preaching, there's Mazinam Tikan who was preaching, telling people, I was looking at him, so this is the one I have been hearing his voice on the, on the radio, on, on the Facebook as well. I said, after this, I will, I will speak to him, I will see him. So, and the... Uh, there was, uh, after the broadcast, uh, everybody was greeting him. And, uh, I was, I was able to, to meet him to, um, through the lady that is, uh, Carol Monday. I was able to meet him. And, uh, I shook his hand. I felt like, yes, I have seen him. I've even touched him. Very, very proud. That oh definitely anytime he's going any broadcast, I I'm going to follow him if I have if I'm around if I'm at home, I'm going to follow him and for to that broadcast. So after that day, I think a week or two later, um I I I posted something about him. Some people keep criticizing me and blah blah blah. So I said I don't care. So another day as well. I, there was a time I, I said, let me try and chat him again if he's going to respond. And I did. And he responded immediately. So I was telling him that, I said, uh, I don't have document in this country. And uh, I'm, I'm trying if I can have, because I, the one I applied before, they, they denied me. And uh, they didn't give me the document. So they said, because I don't have family here. You know, I said, uh, you know, I said, I should not worry that I should try apply again, that they will give me my document. That's in the UK, United Kingdom. So I said, okay, um, I tried again and I applied. In fact, three months, they gave me my paper. So I told him, I told him, I said, I've gotten my paper and uh, I want to see you. He said, he said he, he's, he's, uh, he's moving around at the, that time and he's not around. So I think he went to, he went to America. 
he went to one one place in America. I don't know if it's Chicago or something. He went there. So and I said, okay, when he comes, that uh, I will see him. Even upon his upon his um, visit there in America, there's still other people that wanted to see him. Uh, they want him to come to their meeting to broadcast. So that's how he moves around. He goes to Israel a um, couple of times. Um, that was the 2000, um, that was before 2015. So when he, he was uh, arrested or when he was kidnapped from uh, Lagos, that time that he stopped in, uh, in Lagos International Airport. That's my Mohamed, so yeah. he stopped there, and uh, from there they traced him to where he, he lodged in the hotel because before he can go, he can proceed his journey in the next morning. They just went to go and kidnap him, then they took him to Abuja. And that was when I said, oh, this is very, very bad. I felt serious pain, felt serious pain. And... Um, there was a time, because of that, I made one uh, video. That's the reason why, in the beginning of this uh, um, audio, I didn't want to mention my name because I've done some things that they were, the federal government were looking for me. They thought, they thought I would live in Nigeria. So they were looking for me. They thought I lived there. They couldn't find me. And... Uh, when people around my area discovered that it was me, um, I think uh, police came and they, they arrested me. They put a handcuff on my hand. They took me to the uh, uh, police station and stuff. But I didn't want to go in details because people that knows me will, will know about what I'm talking about now. So after a while, after a while, I said, what is this? Why did they arrest this man? I did not have any power to, to go to see him, to know what is, what is going on. Then from there, I kept on. I said, definitely, they will, <clears throat> they will relieve him. They will release him, and he will be fine. So that's my encounter. With, with what I want to say with this one as well, I said... You see, the template that he has laid down, that is what um, Simon Ekpa is following. So if you think you are going to destroy everything, you have to rethink again because everybody are going to the same place. We cannot live in another man's land forever. Definitely when you get old, you will go home. Definitely, no matter how long it will take. If you don't go home, what about your children? Your children will go home too. So this is the best way and the best time for us to embrace um, the truth. Follow Simon Epa. Do everything that he is saying because this is the template that has been laid down for a long time and it's been passed on to him as the disciple. The first time I didn't like how uh, Simon Epa do uh, it's not like I don't like him, but it's just I'm not following him. But from time to time, I do I do see his video on Facebook. Like uh, when they arrested, um, um, where well, is is the kidnap now for the Kenya one, and he put his sent message on his phone, and uh, saying that that uh, they only uh, kidnapped my leader, but. They could not kid, uh, kidnap the disciple. That uh, they're not going to take it easy for, with them, with Nigeria. That they're going to continue for where months and now they cannot stop. So I was thinking it's a joke. From there, and I start following him every time. Anything he does, I follow him. And at the moment now, I've I, I've noticed that he has a lot of qualification. He has been to the army. He has been to different things. He is a lawyer and uh, in fact, he's a, he's a reserved army because if you don't take him serious now, the army people 
if there's any fight or coming up in uh, where he lives in Finland, they will take him and he will join them. Then our struggle is, is finished from there because nobody has sprung up to, to speak boldly like the way he's speaking. A lot of people have called to arrest him, arrest him, arrest him, but they, they know that what he's doing is right. Let's uh, stop this uh, audio from here. And uh, dear friends, please put hand on deck. Let everybody do this once and for all. It's for our own benefit, for the future of our children. If you, you didn't benefit from it, your children will benefit from it. So let's take this issue very, very serious. This message, it comes from good heart. And please take it seriously. And it's very, very, very important. We have to go home. We cannot live in another man's land forever. I hope everybody here, please, we can put our hand together and we could get with you in the final. Uh -huh. So this thing will stop here. Next time we will talk. One day, one of these days, and I will see the person in the talk. So. Bye. Okay, this is where we draw the curtain of this conversation, right? Now I want to see your comments on the comment section, right? Tell us what you think. Okay, and also, if you're one of those who criticize, make sure to do so in a respectable manner, right? And also, don't forget to subscribe. If you've not subscribed yet to this channel, click on the notification bell so that you get to see our videos anytime we upload. Okay, because we upload more and more videos. We keep you updated on what is going on regarding Biafra, right? Also, don't forget to share so that many of our brothers and sisters will get to know what is going on. Okay? Thank you very much. God bless you.